So back once again with Dr. Stephen Lane. Now, last time we showed the Cervelo R5 bike, that got a lot of views. A lot of people were interested in what Slane buys because Slane has some really, really nice equipment and I like to look at nice equipment. Now today, this is the same bike, yeah? This is the same bike. Same Version 2.0. So, okay, we'll go, like we did last time, we'll go top down and we'll talk about every component on there because I'm interested to see what solution Slane has chosen as the lightest bike. So this is, first of all, what does it weigh? Uh, 5.38 without pedals. 5.38. So this is your weight weenie project. This just became a bit of an obsession to get it as light as I could. That's unbelievable. Okay, so rewinding back, this is the same frame. Same frame, what was, same... It looks entirely different. What was the process? Much just the frame. Well, I spent a good week sanding it back. Don't ever try to sand your own bike back to bare carbon because one Raoul will tell you off. Okay. But he said Raoul Lucia from job. Lucia Tech, who's our, our, yes. our local carbon expert. And two, it takes a long time. So I sanded it back, then yep. I gave it to a mate, John Clarkson, who owns a painting company, yep. Roadrunner. And he pretty much, his direction was minimal paint, a couple of little like decal stencils and okay, a gold so pinstripe along the top. Okay, so it didn't look like something that has come out of the factory completely raw. No, this was, kept it. this was just a matte clear coat so you could see the carbon and, and that's about it. Brilliant. So, okay, so focusing more on the frame itself, which was the original R5 we saw in the other video, what was the weight savings by shaving all that... Uh, by taking all the, the paint, paint off, off yep. it saved nearly 110 grams, maybe, all up. 110 grams. That's on a scale, on a kilogram scale. That's, that's significant. Cool. Yeah, yeah, you can see when that now. When a frame weighs maybe 700 to start off with, and you take 100 grams off. And paint itself isn't structural. So that was only just well, decorative. Well, let's hope not, because there's none on it anymore. <laughs> Awesome, so the Cervelo R5 frame, that size is your 54, is it medium? Yep, 54, R5, 2000 and I'd say probably 14 maybe. Okay, yep, and you love this bike, that's why you stuck with it. I used to love the paint scheme on it and I just didn't want to sell it or anything, so I thought, well, I got a new one, I got the new R5. Slane's got a good collection of which bikes. Which I'm in this, love with. This is the second bike we'll do of Slane's, we'll do another one coming up soon as well. Slane's got a new TT bike, which we need to have a closer look at as well. Okay, so for your weight weenie project, so we've got the frame, the R5. Yep. Group set, what did you choose? Uh, I went with ETAP. Just because, well, look, it's probably not the lightest. Like, I think the lightest is like a tram 11 speed, something like that, uh, yep. mechanical. But I hadn't had ETAP, I thought I'd give it a go. Keeps it a bit cleaner. Okay, so this is. It's been you've fun so far. Upgraded with the ETAP shift kit, it wasn't the entire group set? Uh, no, yes, yeah, so it was just the, I think they call it the upgrade kit. So it's a Wi Fi. Because I already had brakes and I didn't want the, the cranks. So it's running um, THM fibula brakes, which I didn't buy new. Don't look up how much they cost. Now, they're the, stupid. Okay, speaking of the brakes themselves, they look very, very funky. They we'll actually gonna... work really well. They actually have good modulation. They're not flexy. That's what we've seen in the past with third-party brakes that were super light. They were super squishy, flexy, and yeah, they didn't work are, at all. These so are pretty good. The design of these has been fixed up and quite grippy. Correct. Well, it's just carbon. There's not much flex in it compared to an alloy light one. Right. Okay. So there's the frame. There's the group set. There's the brakes we've chosen. Let's keep on the group set. You've got the cranks. Um, we have so the... the cranks. I like to point out this is not many bikes can get this light, but this is 5.3 with a power meter on there. With a power meter. With a power meter. So if I put other cranks on, it could probably be under five. Without the power meter on them. Maybe yeah. go a pedal power meter. We'll, we'll, we'll do some weighings later or on. Or maybe just without inside. a power meter. That'd you be can't, it just, it just doesn't happen without a power meter, does it? Does it <laughs> I know <laughs> what 300 watts feels like. <laughs> okay, so the cranks themselves, they're... Cranks, uh, an FSA K-Force light yep. with a Powder Max NG. And the rings? With these fancy extra light rings that I think come from the UK, just yep. off a website. They make a bunch of cool lightweight stuff. Yep. It's actually a 110 BCD mm -hmm. with a 3953. So you can actually get compact rings, so a 110, yep. but in like 130 BCD no, sized rings. No flex issues? No, Doesn't they're pretty be? good. I'm not sprinting on this bike. I guess this isn't built for strength. I guess yeah. it'll, it'll hold up, but it's not, you know. They've been pretty good. They shift really good, so. 
Okay, cool. No cool. problem so, so far. So it's almost a custom crank set as well. Up the back there, you've got the E-Tap derailleur. That's all standard, is it? Or have you uh, there's some little uh, KCNC jockey wheels in there that are a couple of grams lighter okay. than normal ones. And I, I know you love a good bottom bracket. What bottom bracket are you running on this <laughs> bike? Well, it's actually, I went to the trouble of taking bearings out of cups and weighing them individually <laughs> to see what weighs less. So they're, they're Endura, Enduro, I think Enduro ceramic yep. bearings in a okay. rotor cup. Right. I would have gone my standard C bear because I love my C bear, but this yep. is lighter. Okay, so that's that's pretty much all the bike covered so far down this end. We'll go back to this side. Handlebars? They are actually the same ones that were on there. So they're a Zip SL, I think, Service Course SL. Carbon alloy? Yeah, they're carbon, okay. like in a 38, but we just sanded them back a bit and put a bit of a black coat on it just to make them look like the rest of the bike so yep. they didn't have stupid zip logos on there <laughs> okay and the stem itself that's again the stem and the seat post yep. uh about as light as you can get there i don't know if that's called a mix or a mcfk but they are stupidly light uh and they do the job pretty well okay and the saddle itself yeah. now this is something special when I grabbed it, I freaked out that I was going to break it. Show us the flex Apparently in the saddle. Apparently this is the lightest saddle in the world. Show us the flex but, in the uh, saddle. If, that... you, if you do it from the wrong angle, it's kind of scary. Now, carbon but, uh, will flex one way, but is strong in the other. It's fine when it's... you're sitting on it. I wouldn't ride around on it as a daily one. I do that, man. <laughs> <laughs> Gotta go this way. Okay, that way. But, uh... Lightest saddle in the world from Seller Italia, the C59. It's only just new, actually. It's like 62 grams. 62 grams for the entire saddle? Yes, and you could slice a tomato on the edge of this part, I reckon, nearly. I'd better check my hands for cuts in as well. Unbelievable. Okay, now wheel set. Obviously, race day, you run different wheels than training day. Yeah, these are the race wheel. These are just, oh, just these are just my old MV tubbies I had laying around. As you do. That I got secondhand ages ago for a good price. Um, I think they're MV 2.2s. I think they called them classics back in the day. Yep. So they're just a DT Swiss 240 hub, MV wheels, uh, rim, and they're tubbies. And Vittoria tubs. Yep. Okay. Uh, now to the final details. Pedals themselves quite light. I see you've got the Durace well, pedals on. They're just the new, new Durace pedals. Yep. The other fancy parts are the cages. The cages are like pretty light ones from Altitude. Some Instagram mob that I saw and went, oh, they look nice. They kind of match the bike. So the marketing works on Instagram. Yeah. Seat post clamps like an aftermarket. The little carbon one. Yep. Uh, cables are the Jaguar link ones. For each 10 centimeters of this cable yep. versus a normal Shima uh, well, just say SRAM or Shimano, it was like I saved five grams. I did, I weighed everything. <laughs> Bar tapes, like noted uh, SL uh, physique stuff. Yep. Um, the little top cap is just one I weighed all the top caps I had and that was the lightest one I had. That's actually a see-through top cap as well. We'll get a close-up of that. Yeah. Uh, what else is in there? Their bearings. I couldn't get a lower bearing, but the upper bearing is like, if you can see it, it's Headset like just, bearings. Slane's gone to the level of yeah, headset bearings. Yeah, you can get bearing super types. light headset bearings from, I was looking up for FSA ones. I can't, these might be Cane Creek, I think. Yep. And they make an alloy, an alloy uh, race and they're probably 15, 20 grams lighter than a normal one or something like that. Unbelievable. So and that's in there. I think we'll finish on the skewers because I think we've covered absolutely everything. Oh, mate, I've had them for ages. I don't even know what they were. I think they were eBay specials. Okay, titanium? Oh, I don't know, they're just light. Just I super guess light. So. I think they're a rip off of the tune ones. Okay, right. I think. So there we have it, Slane's super light bike project. Now, question is, like that's it standing still. Does it ride well? It rides like it used to without, if I take these wheels out and put other wheels in, you I would. could race a crit on it. Okay. It feels perfectly fine. Right. I'm still scared I'm going to break it, <laughs> <laughs> but it, it is, it's fine. But with these wheels on, it goes up a hill. It does feel significantly different going up right. a hill. I guess it's not just about the weight of the bike itself. It's when you're moving, when you're out of the saddle, flicking it around. I did notice when I first went to a lighter road bike, as soon as I was out of the saddle, there's none of this big sort of pendulum weight underneath mm. you. And with that saddle, which weighs next to nothing, you'd, it'd feel like a feather underneath you. Yeah. No, look, it rides fine. If you, All I've got to do is swap out the seat post and, uh, you know, that's a pretty easy takeout and I could just go do a training ride on it. Yep. 
Uh, but other than that, it's all been good so far. Now, we won't even talk about the price. It's won a race already. It's run Mount Buller. Mount Buller, the, the, the road stage, actually, yeah, well, the, the tour, Mansfield tour, plus the, uh, the Buller stage, which is, how long's Buller? 17 kilometres up a hill? Yeah, something oh, like Oh, at the end of it, yes. Yeah. An hour and a half at about 340 watts. <laughs> Unbelievable. And I'm sure it's, it's only a little bit to the bike. It's a lot to do with the engine as well. And Slane at the moment is absolutely flying. We won't ask why he's flying. It may be because his wallet is a lot lighter after this. We won't even go into the price tag of this. I'll link below to a few of the components Slane has here. So if you want to dive in and see just what a few of these might cost out on the internet, um, be scared and put the wallet out of reach. It's not that bad. I think it is. I'm riding Altegra. I don't have kids or a wife. I just buy bikes. Is it tax deductible though? That's the question. Okay, we'll leave it there today. There's a full in-depth look at top to bottom Slane's super light Cervelo R5 project bike. And that looks pretty good. It almost blew away here in the wind. Okay, thanks for coming Slane. And I think we better pull out the TT bike and have a look at that now too.